I want to create a um, speculative design concept, which is about imagining um, how the future would be if we could uh, stop aging. So, my name is uh, Emilia Tika. I'm a designer, artist and a researcher. And CRISPR is a topic I've been researching now for um, two years, approximately. And I'm working now on uh, a larger project, which I called the CRISPR Chronicles, uh, as a working title. And uh, this is a triplet of works about dreams and wishes driving the biotechnological innovations. First project about CRISPR was Eudaimonia, a speculative scenario about um, psychological enhancement. Uh, it was a film and objects has been um, selected to some film festivals and um, lately it was also shown at the Ars Electronica festival. And as Louis already said, uh, the last two, three months um, I've been spending as the artist in residency at the MDC laboratories. Um, artist in residency program organized by MDC and state. And uh, I'm here today to tell you more about the result of this residency. Um, my residency project called ION. ION Trajectories of Longevity um, and CRISPR is a speculative uh, scenario. It is, on the other hand, um, about this very core topic of Western culture, immortality. We know, um, for example, the promise of eternal life in all of the world uh, religions. And of course, uh, it has this vast cultural history uh, of stories. And on the other hand, ION is about this very novel and contemporary gene editing technology, CRISPR. This is uh, one example of uh, those stories in modernity. Um, picture of Dorian Gray, uh, this is quote, quote from the book from the 1890s. Youth is the only thing uh, worth having. And this is a phenomenon um, from modernity and science. This is a Russian, uh, Alexander Bogdanov, a Russian physician, philosopher and science fiction writer. He very strongly believed that he could, um, or one could rejuvenate himself through uh, blood transfusions. He's also the founder of the Blood Transfusion Center uh, in Russia in the 1920s. Um, unfortunately, he died um, on this, his own dream because he was trying to rejuvenate himself with the blood of a younger student. And unfortunately, the blood also had some bacteria in in it, so he, he unfortunately died in this big dream of his. And here are more uh, contemporary headlines about the hype about stopping aging with gene editing technology. These are all headlines from 2018. For example, aging in human cells successfully reversed uh, in lab, says one of them. This is one of the main advocates um, about immortality from Silicon Valley. His name is Audrey Gray. Uh, this is his interview in the Zeit magazine just from this September. What was very striking to me uh, when I uh, read his interview and uh, heard him talking, that he really refuses to talk about societal uh, and philosophical implications of these technologies. He refuses to talk about how would the world actually be if this technology would be uh, possible. And that's something I personally want to talk about. <laughs> so this is uh, sort of the three different steps of my project. Scientific, my research question was, um, could the aging clock be reversed in cellular level with CRISPR? This was something I was researching at the MDC. And in the end, my project is a speculative design scenario about the question, how would a future society look like where people could choose to rejuvenate themselves? And this um, speculative scenario uh, is then supposed to open up um, deeper philosophical questions, 
such as what is actually behind this human wish to live forever. And first, uh, quickly about the, the scientific part, what I was doing in the MDC laboratories. This is an overview of um, scientific perspectives of aging. Um, I figured that there's these two um, takes on aging. Aging can be, on the other hand, uh, seen as an intentional process, which means that aging is sort of uh, something that's reprogrammed in the cells. So it's a program that at some point kicks in and uh, humans try to manipulate this program. Or on the other hand, this is also Aubrey Gray's um, perspective, that aging is um, accumulation of damage. So he's always referring to an old car that uh, is getting rusty and you have to replace the parts. And then um, this here below are some uh, directions of, in the research of genetics and aging. And this is very vast field, there's so many different theories um, and nothing really um, very specific yet how we could stop aging. I was very inspired by this um, scientific paper here uh, during my research in, in MDC. This paper is about um, genes called uh, Yamanaka factors. Um, of course, all the scientists know exactly what this means, but I'm just going to explain very quickly to the non-scientists. And Yamanaka factors are usually used to, to turn adult cells into IPS cells, so sort of like embryonic cell. So you take um, adult, let's say, skin cell, you activate the Yamanaka factors, and it goes back to um, embryonic ce uh, cell type, which can be then differentiated in any uh, any cell types, but this is not really what this uh, paper is here about. <coughs> this is about uh, the scientists here claim that when you're not when you're not going all the way to the embryonic cells, or you activate partially this uh, Yamanaka factors, so the cell type is not even changing yet. It is uh, going um, slowly towards the embryonic cell, but not all the way. And the scientists did this with ma mice. They constantly, on a daily basis, um, activated the Yamanaka factors. And it's claimed here in this paper that this rejuvenated the mouse and also rejuvenated the, the human cells. And here may be a little bit more clearly shown for the non-scientist. So for the first time, that by expressing these factors for a short duration, you can maintain the cell's identity while reversing age-associated hallmarks. So this was sort of a scientific thesis on rejuvenation that I could found, find and I was very uh, interested about. So based on these scientific um, papers and, uh, and a concept, I created uh, my own artistic speculative concept of an idea that you could um, partially uh, activate these Yamanaka factors with the new kind of CRISPR called DCAS9. This is a CRISPR that doesn't cut the genome but activates genes. So the idea is that you could, with the DCAS9, activate uh, these Yamanaka factors as an everyday rejuvenation treatment. So this was my uh, so speculative idea. And um, I did some proof, proof of concept experiments uh, in the laboratory with scientists, some of them here today. <laughs> and um, we activated, um, using DCAS9, one of the Yamanaka factors in, in human cells in the laboratory, and also partially reprogrammed some um, human muscle cells. And this, um, these experiments are part of my installation here, so you can take a look at them later. But around this um, scientific experiments and scientific concept, I want to create a um, speculative design concept, which is about imagining um, how the future would be if we could uh, stop aging. And firstly, this, um, i done this by uh, designing an object, uh, which is an everyday device, um, an inhalator, where you could inhale this uh, gene edit uh, on an everyday uh, ritual and uh, through that uh, remain the youth. 
And um, of course, the object is not functional. It's meant to be speculative and, uh, and for uh, further imagination of the viewers. And around this object, uh, I created a speculative uh, story, which uh, is more about the philosophical and societal questions. And um, to create a story that would really touch people, would really um, bring people closer to this topic, um, I talked to a lot of people in different ages, some of them really old, um, close to 90. And I asked the people, uh, would you prolong your lifespan if you could? And how would you think that this would affect in your, in your life? <clears throat> and I found this a very, very intimate question. It has a lot to do with how we perceive what death is and uh, our decisions in life. So I think this topic really goes to the, um, the core questions about uh, being human. But what was very striking to me um, in these talks was like almost 50% of the people would say like, no, I would never use this technology. I want to have my natural lifespan. And uh, the other 50% would say, of course, I would immediately like to uh, start using technology that keeps me young. So uh, on this point, um, I created a speculative story that can be seen here as a, as a photographs um, next to us. And it's a story of a couple. The story goes like this. So the couple, um, when they were young, uh, one of them decided to use the technology, the man, uh, and the woman decided um, not to use the technology. And the, the story in the pictures takes place then six years later when they have to face this fact um, of their decision. She is in the end of her natural lifespan and he will continue living um, alone. So when I talk to people about this topic, for me, one of the core questions became that being able to answer this question, if you would like to prolong your lifespan or maybe live um, longer, or maybe forever, um, it's all about how you see what, what death is. Is death an ending? That we only have this physical life here and um, nothing after? Or, or if death is maybe a change to something? And this became one of the one of the core questions when I was uh, developing this this speculative uh, story. So this is really about the, the clashing of these two um, worldviews and what kind of uh, what kind of everyday life these people have uh, after this decision. And one more thing um, that became very important uh, for the story and from the talks of people is uh, how we actually perceive um, the time. All of us here, we know that we age, and some of them also already has aged a bit further than the others, but um, we know that this is imminently leading to our end in some point. But still some people live like this would be the last day on Earth. They take very hedonistic choices, even if they know it's not so healthy, it might uh, lead to illness. And some people are very careful, um, only eat things that are healthy, never make uh, any impulsive choices. So we already um, perceive this very individually, this information, how much time we, we actually have. So through the story I wanted to imagine, like, how would you live with the knowledge that you could just prolong your life forever? So you could just continue living and how would this affect in your, your everyday life? But well, if you want to see the complete story, I will invite you to have a look at the work here next to us and uh, to talk to me more about it. But uh, what I wanted to say in the end about this project that this is not really about with what kind of technological application would this be possible or with what kind of technology. What it really is about, uh, would we do it if we could to really stop now for a moment to, to think about it before we even create applications. Is it desirable to extend human lifespan? Is this a desirable future? Yes, and um, I could just throw this question to the audience and you can come to me later and tell your 
<laughs> perspective on this. These are my collaboration partners for the project. And then, yes, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>